Right, welcome back to another video. This week we've got this turret bucket to sort out. That's the frame that goes underneath the bucket and it pivots off there and it tips. And as you can see, it's broken. So that side there is broken off completely. That one's snapped and that one's twisted. So I think what I'll have to do is chop them off across there, profile some new legs out and weld them back on. We'll cut it off as long as possible across there so I can get as much weld as I can to weld it back on. Um, I'll have to chop them off and do the same. So that's inside the bucket. Obviously the pin for the ram has snapped and the ram has come through the front. Um, but it used to be a big bucket. You know, the floor used to be round bars going like that and someone's plated over the top of it. And because I've plated over the top of it, you can't get the main pivot pin in or out, in or out anymore. So I'm going to have to alter that as well. Probably going to have to chop a triangle out of there, make some new triangles, but with that pivot pin slightly higher up so you can get the pin in and out. And then pins are absolutely knackered anyway. They're just completely warm, so they need replacing anyway. So where are these legs going here? There's a stop welded onto the bucket there. But there's all that space in there, so if I chop that stop off, move it up a bit, I can make them a lot wider, which I think I'll do with that. And there's obviously a crack there to repair as well. Same with that side. do a voice over here because there was an aeroplane flying over and he couldn't hear what I was saying. So what I'm going to do first is cut that pin out and get the ram out make sure that's all right and then I'm going to chop that pin out there so I can get that leg out. So what I'm pointing at now is the round bar in the floor and then someone has plated over the top of the round bar but because I've done that you now can no longer get the main pin in or out so I'm going to have to alter that so I can put it back together again. Well, it's a bit of a mess in there. You see why the pin's bent because the the, uh, like the boss is missing from that side, so the pin is completely unsupported at that side. And that well, I don't know what's on there. And you can see the same at this side. That one's there. That's all cracked around there, and that one's completely disappeared. So no wonder the uh, no wonder the ram's gone through the front.
Right, I've got this in the workshop now. Just gonna quickly cut that box section out. Doesn't matter really how neat I cut it out because I'm gonna weld some plates in there anyway, so the box will have to be shorter. So I'll just quickly cut through it, guess. made this bit of a template here that goes on there matches up with the profile of the old plate so then I can mark across the bottom of it and I know where to cut So I've got them cut off and ground down the match. The rest of the way up is a bit of a shitty bit in the middle, but that'll be getting cut out anyway. And then I'm gonna well prep them, put a 60 degree, well 30 degree bevel on this side, and a 30 degree on the other bit. I've already done this one. I forgot to record it. This side I cut off with the reciprocating saw, but it took too long. So the second one I did, um, I just took a scissor off with gas and then ground it back. Just ignore that bit, that bit's too weld up as well. So I've got them marked up now where I need to cut off both sides.
I also could have done without them notches being there. Someone's notched that out to put a post clamp in there for some reason. But I think I'll have to fill that back in again. And then when I put my new plate on, it'll be the same as that one. I've done it on both sides. So that's all sorted now, it's all prepped and ready. We'll, uh, we'll get the legs cut out now to go on here. So I was having issues trying to draw a pattern off that leg, the one I chopped off, because it's, it's a bent and twisted. So uh, what I've done is I've tacked the frame onto the back of the bucket and I can tip the whole bucket on its back and then I can get all my measurements for the legs straight off the bucket and then it eliminates any guesswork then. As the tip back now, I can see exactly where, how long, and dimensions my legs need to be. Pivot pins there, down to there. I think with these pins, because I'm on limited time and limited budget, rather than moving them holes up like I was first intended, I think I'm just going to cut a strip out the floor, let the pin, and then replate it from the underneath. So it's not so the plate's not sat on top of them bars, and then I'll be able to get that pin in and out. And then I'll have to make some new ones of these, obviously, a new pin. But I think that'll be a quicker and more cost-effective way of doing it. So what I'm doing here is I'm drawing a pattern for me Magic Eye Profiler to follow. My CNC plasma doesn't have enough duty cycle to be cutting 30mm in long lengths, so Magic Eye is the machine for the job. So I've got my pattern drawn here just in pencil just to make sure all the measurements add up and everything's right and now I'll go over the top of it with a sharpie pen so there's a nice black line for the magic eye to follow.
Uh, I've got my pattern all lined up. Uh, I've checked it. It follows the pattern nice. I've got the plate lined up. So we'll cut one out and then I'll have to turn the pattern round so they fit together tighter on the plate. I don't think I'll get all far out this plate. So I've just lifted this one out now, just to make sure it's right. It fits, fits nice that. So I'll get on and cut the other three out now. That's all I can get out of that plate. Uh, I'll have to swap, swap plates over now, but the other bit of plate I've got is too long to fit on here, so I'll have to slice a bit off it first. So that's them straight off the profile bed. Quite a decent cut quality on them. Right, so this is my big bit of plate of 
but I need to cut in half because it's too big to fit on my cutting table. So I'm going to use my straight line cutter, which uh, I only just bought that off Facebook Marketplace last night, so it'll be good to see how it works. really well I think it's probably paid for itself already so I've got all four legs cut out now I just need a hole drilling in there for where the pin for the ram goes through so I've got that one marked already uh, I'm going to drill that through with like a seven mil lay it on top of one of the others and use a transfer punch to transfer it through onto that one and then tack tack them together in pairs and drill them as pairs sit that one on top of that one now and transfer punch them through and then the two that are marked I'll tack on top of the other two and then drill them through there's a I think it's an inch pin that they need so I'll drill them through just under an inch and then go through with an inch reamer So that's them tacked together and then a little pilot hole drilled in them. So I'll take them over to the radio arm now and drill them out.
So they are drilled and reaming out to inch now. Uh, I've drilled them in a pair, so I'm going to keep them as a pair. I'm going to mark them. They're all identical, but because they've been drilled as a pair, I'm going to keep them together. So I'm ready to cut a bevel on this plate now. We've got my new straight line cutter set up with a 30 degree angle on it. And see how we get on. So I didn't have much luck cutting the uh, welding bevel on with a straight line cutter, so we're going to use the the uh, profile cutter. You can do straight lines with it, so I've got that set to 30 degrees. See how we get on with this. Well, that worked pretty well. Just another three to do now. Right, so they're all ready now. I just need to chop these old stops out. That one's already broken off, but chop that one out and the two at the other side. And then I can put the plates in. So I've got them just roughly cut off with gas. I'm gonna use my little long nose DeWalt grinder now just to get in and grind it all smooth. Right, so everything is ready now pretty much. To tack together there's a few things to think about i need to make sure that, that pivot point is exactly in the right place otherwise it won't match up with the stops on the back of the bucket i also need to make sure that the pinholes for the ram line up properly i need to make sure that it doesn't all twist or pull when i weld it up i was originally thinking that i could tack these down to my bench with the right spacings and then tack this bit onto it but if I don't get the angle right between the back and the floor, then it won't match up properly with the stops. So I hope that all makes sense. Makes sense in my head, makes sense to me, but uh, you'll see what I mean anyway. So I'll have to do that in part two because this video is getting fairly long now. But I've read everyone's comments about the music and not speaking loud enough. So I'm not using any music anymore. And hopefully you can hear me. Let me know whether I'm speaking loud enough and if you can hear me properly. So anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and get ready for part two. And also it's been pretty windy this last week. So as you can hear, there's a lot of background noise. So hopefully you'll be no idea what I'm saying. <laughs>